Let's talk about the best meal that you could eat to help reduce placking in your arteries or even help prevent cardiovascular disease. Now, I've done a lot of videos on what to avoid to prevent heart disease. Today, I'm going to primarily focus on what to eat, okay? But we first have to give you a little background of what is going on behind the scenes as far as a cardiovascular disease. Um, and primarily, we're going to talk about plaque. Now, what is in plaque? Plaque is a combination of calcium, protein, and cholesterol. Uh, many times, the calcium is the result of biofilms. So what's a biofilm? It's a colony of microbes that these microbes have built these little calcium igloos or shells to protect themselves so they can go underneath the radar. So when you see calcium plaque in the arteries, underneath that placking, there could be uh, a microbial community. And biofilms tend to accumulate on roughened edges, right? If the arteries were nice and smooth and strong, they probably would never accumulate on the arteries. But the question is, what causes them to get stuck on the inside of the artery wall in your coronary artery, for example? Well, that would be some type of, um, they call that lesion or oxidation or inflammation or damage from you know excessive sugar in the diet. It could be your diabetic. You could be a pre-diabetic. It could come from omega-6 fatty acids, junk foods, alcohol, all sorts of things. So when you see placking, you're also going to see this LDL. Um, a very specific kind, the small, dense particle size. And uh, that's correlated too with a high sugar, high carb diet. And some of this cholesterol in this little package, and that's what the LDL is, it's a protein that carries cholesterol. Cholesterol doesn't exist as cholesterol in the arteries like free floating. It's always in a little shuttle bus. But the cholesterol is coming in the form of Band-Aid with the cement, the, the uh, calcium. And then also you're going to get a fibrous tissue, like a protein cement that kind of mixes in with the calcium and the cholesterol as a band-aid. And then you'll see like um, a thrombus or a clot forming too in that same area. So given that information, what can we do to prevent, slow down, or reverse this situation? All right, there's several things to know about this. Um, one of the controlling vitamins with calcium is vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 drives the calcium into the bone. Without enough K2, calcium tends to um, develop in the soft tissues of the body, not just your arteries, but also in the joints as well. And there's one more point about biofilms. There's some interesting things about biofilms, especially when we're dealing with placking in your arteries. There's several studies that I found that links um, periodontal bacteria, the bacteria in your mouth, this pathogenic bacteria actually ending up in the placking in your arteries. I mean, that's interesting because what are these uh, periodontal uh, bacteria, they're pathogenic, they're in, the, in your mouth, doing in your heart, okay? Now, you have to realize like in the mouth, you have over 700 different species, okay? Not just bacteria, but different types of bacteria in your mouth. And one of the reasons why the bacteria can actually go through the pores, uh, through your uh, gums and into your bloodstream, is the same reason why bacteria can leak from your intestines into your bloodstream. That's called bacterial translocation, where bacteria is moving through the wall because there's increased leakiness or permeability. And a lot of times that leakiness comes from a vitamin C deficiency. And this is why when people are deficient in vitamin C, they might get bleeding gums. So that allows the microbes to go right through these little holes into your bloodstream. So high vitamin C foods are definitely necessary uh, for this meal. So foods with large amounts of vitamin C would also be a good thing. Then we have vitamin E, okay? Vitamin E in relationship to keeping your cardiovascular system intact is very, very important. First of all, it helps prevent those lesions on the inside of the, um, the wall of the artery called endothelial tissue. When you're low in vitamin E, which is a very powerful antioxidant, you can get a lot of oxidation and inflammation. So vitamin E is very important. Also, it's important in the heart muscle itself, keeping your oxygen high and preventing an actual heart attack. So we have vitamin K2, very important vitamin C, very important, and vitamin E. And the other important thing with the heart, especially to avoid that 
lesion in the artery is to keep your omega-6 fatty acids very low and keep your omega-3 very, very high. So a really important thing in this meal should be omega-3 fatty acids, okay? All right, so what should this meal look like? Well, let's start from the top, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, okay? What food is very, very high in omega-3? And that would be wild-caught salmon. So if you include salmon in this meal, okay, you're going to have a good amount of omega-3 fatty acids, which is going to support the arteries as well as the heart muscle itself. And having enough omega-3 will decrease your inflammation as well in your arteries. And doing that can actually lower blood pressure as well. All right, there's something else that I think is very, very important in preventing and even maybe reversing some of this plaquing in the arteries. This thing has like seven times the requirements of vitamin C. It also is one of the most microbial dense foods that you can eat, giving you a strong probiotic effect with high levels of lactic acid bacteria. Now, let me just kind of discuss lactic acid bacteria. It's not just one bacteria. It's a group of many different types of bacteria that is usually involved in fermentation. And so the food that I'm talking about is sauerkraut, okay? That is a fermented cabbage product. And sauerkraut is loaded with this lactic acid bacteria. And lactic acid bacteria as a standalone thing is very interesting because it can act as an ACE inhibitor to help lower blood pressure. It can inhibit biofilms, which is very, very cool. It can decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease by supporting your gut. There is a huge relationship between a healthy gut with the right microbes and a healthy heart. Also, this lactic acid bacteria can help regulate LDL cholesterol, especially the small dense particle size LDL. And having enough of this lactic acid bacteria can enhance your production of secondary bile salts, which can help the absorption of more vitamin E, vitamin D, and vitamin K2. All three of those are fat-soluble and can greatly support the cardiovascular tissue. And it just so happens that sauerkraut is loaded with vitamin K2. Now, normally vitamin K2 is in like certain hard cheeses, uh, fats, but microbes can also make K2. Just to summarize what sauerkraut is, it's a superfood for the heart. It supports the gut lining to prevent this these microbes from traveling through a leaky gut up into the heart. It has many different diverse types of microbial entities that can greatly help you in many different ways. And then sauerkraut's loaded with vitamin K2 to keep the calcium out of the arteries. It's loaded with vitamin C, like I said before, seven times the RDA. So that gives you a tremendous amount of vitamin C that can directly inhibit biofilms as well as act as an antioxidant in your arteries, preventing these lesions or damage to the wall of the arteries. Remember, the biofilms can only stick to an area that's roughened or irritated. So if your arteries are smooth, they can't quite stick to the inside of your arteries to form the placking in the first place. And the last part of this meal is a big arugula salad with several things in it, which I'm going to cover. But arugula as a vegetable, is a superior salad green compared to regular lettuce because, first of all, it's cruciferous, so it's really good for the liver. It's bitter. It has blood glucose-lowering properties. It's loaded with something called DIM, which can help lower biofilms directly. It also has fiber to feed the bacteria, and it's also loaded in potassium, which can help keep the arteries softened so your blood pressure can stay normal. And then, of course, on that salad, I would put extra virgin olive oil, the real stuff. It has significant effects on blood pressure. Not to mention, it has very powerful anti-inflammatory effects as well. Then I would also add apple cider vinegar, but you can also use basalmic vinegar red. But the acetic acid in the vinegar has many properties to help lowering the risk of cardiovascular disease. It's great for helping regulate your blood sugar. It can help regulate your cholesterol. It can help mobilize your bile salts, and it has anti-inflammatory properties. And then if you add sunflower seeds, okay, we can spike more vitamin E. And like I said before, vitamin E is very, very important. 
Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is a hard cheese, okay? Hard cheeses are loaded with vitamin K2. And the type of cheese I would recommend is called Parmigiano. Now, I probably did not pronounce that exactly like I should, but the American translation from Italian is Parmesan. But apparently there's been a lot of lawsuits involving this topic because apparently Kraft trademarked um, this English uh, translation from the real Parmesan cheese in Italy because the real Parmigiano version of that cheese is only produced by a collective uh, group of farmers in northern Italy that keep their standards very, very high. And this has been going on since the Middle Ages. It wasn't until only fairly recently that Kraft came in there and started to make it. But unfortunately, there's a big difference in how they make it in America versus how they make it uh, in Italy. In Italy, they age it for like one to three years compared to in America. I think they age it for 10 months. And the Kraft's version of this cheese definitely does not have to abide by the same policies and rules and laws than the authentic cheese in Italy has to abide by. And the other thing you have to watch out for in this Americanized uh, Parmesan cheese is that sometimes they add this filler of cellulose, okay, which is wood pulp. So what I would recommend is get the authentic type from Italy and shave it on your salad. I do it every single day. That way you have a delicious cheese that's loaded with vitamin K2 and it's a great amount of protein. Uh, there's probiotics in this product. And it's an incredible product. I actually went to one of the farms where they create this cheese. And uh, I was blown away at what they feed the cows to make sure the microbes are just right. And the soils that they grow the grass on for the cows, they don't get fed grain. It's all grass. And the amount of work that goes in to make this cheese and keep it a really standard process is mind-blowing. And the last thing I'm going to recommend to put on your salad is garlic, okay? You can use powder, you can use actual garlic, you can use fermented garlic, but garlic is great for the heart. It actually can thin the blood. If there's um, a chance that you are at high risk for clotting, it can help lower your blood pressure. It's antimicrobial, anti-biofilm, and the list goes on and on. All right, so now that you have that information, I think the best most interesting next video for you to watch would be the one on biofilms in your mouth. Check it out. I put it right here.